Hello everyone, welcome to the Leesburg Public Library Show. And today we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but recently the City Commission voted to allow uh, people to raise chickens within the city limits of Leesburg. And I'm here with Megan Brew of IFAS, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about chickens and you know we're not even going to get existential about why would a chicken cross Main Street or not we're just going to be here and have a lot of fun so uh, Megan what you, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, background and about IFAS in general sure absolutely um, so I have degrees from the University of Florida go Gators um, <laughs> my bachelor's is in animal science and my master's is in animal nutrition I have been with Extension since 2007 and in Lake County since 2010. Um, IFAS, UF IFAS Lake County Extension is, we're a branch of the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, they have an office in every county in Florida. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of charged with bringing the research and teaching that's done at the university level mm -hmm. and making sure it reaches the people in the communities. So in our office, we have university faculty who are experts in everything from diet and nutrition and personal mm -hmm. finance to growing orange trees to landscaping and then my area is livestock and natural resources so I do a lot of work with anything from cattle and honeybees um, to backyard chickens. Mm -hmm. Okay you know actually I can tell you I can personally attest to IFAS uh, the information when I lived in Broward County I bought a house that had its terrazzo floors covered with carpets which we had removed and so the floor needed to be done. I found on the IFAS extension exactly how to clean and polish a terrazzo Absolutely. floor. Yeah. So you can you can find a lot of stuff you can folks. Find just about anything. Yeah. yeah. But well you know since we're on the topic how can someone actually reach IFAS? <laughs> okay so we are our office is in Tavares and we're open um, 8 to 5 Monday through Friday so it's always great to reach out and kind of meet mm -hmm. the agents, um, whether it's stopping by the office or sending us an email or a phone call. We also have a website, which is lake.ifis.ufl.edu mm -hmm. um, that can be accessed 24-7 and has links to a lot of good research-based publications. Okay, sounds good. Now, what we're going to do is that this is sort of a double question because mm -hmm. I'm actually going to ask you to answer the second part first, but uh, since Leesburg is now permitting uh, fowl to be raised within its city limits, in your opinion, do you think this is sort of a burgeoning locavore movement mm -hmm. starting in this area? But just for the benefit of our audience, can you just sort of give us a sort of textbook explanation of what a locavore is? Sure. <laughs> so locavore is kind of a food movement involving um, trying to source as much as your food as possible from local areas. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't really get a whole lot more local than your own backyard. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, a hundred years ago, the majority of people either grew, lived on a farm grew up on a farm, um, had neighbors who were running a farm. That's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're kind of returning to our roots a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, people are more and more interested in where their food comes from and want to play a more active role in um, the whole food system. Mm -hmm. So having backyard chickens kind of ties into that. Um, mm -hmm. It's a way to, to raise a good protein source in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. um, people are interested in kind of getting back to their roots and, and um, trying some small scale farming on their own. Oh yeah, uh, I'll have to tell you, that was actually my first job on a farm. Was it? And not that I grew up on a farm, but my aunt still had one in North Carolina. And uh, so whenever we went down to visit and, you know, it wasn't a visit, you don't vacation on a farm. Right. You know, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone has any ideas of doing that. It's hard work. Uh, uh, yeah. And that was my first job. I would have to retrieve eggs from underneath the hen, yeah. which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I would feed them and then it gradually escalated as I got older and stronger. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, since we're on the topic of people caring more about locally produced food, uh, you know, how can they find, uh, you know, farmers markets in Lake County? Okay, um, so actually if you go on the county website, there is a list of all the farmers markets in Lake County. I understand Leesburg has one that's on Saturday mornings. Yes, we do, and it's very successful because when I started at the library several years ago, they only were open during the season, mm -hmm. and now they're open all 20, year wow, round. That's so wonderful. Yeah. if you haven't gone to it, definitely come downtown, and uh, it's every Saturday, it's like, you know, like nine 
listening to one or something, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of good stuff. It's all around City Hall, and you can't miss it. Yeah, yeah but uh, anyway, um, now we're getting down to the actual chicken. But uh, now, how would you advise someone who suddenly up and pops saying that, oh, you know, chicken's a pretty good idea, you know, you, how should I start this? <laughs> okay, so first I always advise people to research, research, research before they <laughs> get into something. Um, with anything in agriculture, especially when you're dealing with live animals, mm -hmm. you kind of want to look before you leap. Yeah. Um, so attending extension classes, reading extension uh, publications is a great way to educate yourself. Um, and ask the tough questions and find out if it's something that's really for you or not. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to get calls from people who go out and buy the chickens and then realize that they're not sure how to how to manage them yeah. or they've run into a lot of problems. I'd rather you kind of troubleshoot ahead of time if possible. Oh yeah, uh, you know I should tell you, you maybe you've read it or saw the movie, but uh, uh, a woman named Betty McDonald actually wrote a book. Her first husband decided he wanted to raise chickens in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, she wrote this best-selling novel in the 1940s called The Egg and I. <laughs> and it was made into an equally successful motion picture with Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray. Mm -hmm. And I think the picture is much easier to find than the book. But the thing is, is that it really goes into great detail, uh, you know, how pitfalls, because she was a city girl yeah. and, and she knew nothing about farm life or chickens or anything. Yeah. So, and if you get a chance to see the movie, it's really hilarious. Well, I always say if farming was easy, everyone would do it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, starting since we talked about Miss McDonald, uh, mm -hmm. can you give us some of the advantages and disadvantages of raising chickens sure. at home? Uh, well, advantages would certainly be, I mean, you can't get much more fresh than a backyard egg. Mm -hmm. um, I think people take a lot of joy and pride in their food when they grow it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's really satisfying to, whether you're growing a garden or growing an egg from a hen, um, it's really satisfying to prepare a meal with stuff that you've made yourself or helped to make yourself. Um, disadvantages, I mean, it's it's not something that you can keep backyard chickens and, um, you know, get away for the weekend without making arrangements for them. Mm -hmm. um, you have to provide for them uh, food and water, shelter, protection from the elements, protection from predators. Mm -hmm. um, they don't go on vacation just because you are, so, mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely a commitment like keeping any other sort of animal might be. Oh yeah, uh, and I can ex tell you I experienced that because my sister is a racehorse trainer, okay. and for many years while she had a full-blown farm, uh, we would have to spend holidays, oh, yeah. Christmas, you know, New Year, whatever, Thanksgiving. I mean, she. I think in like within a 10-year period, she only was able to come up to my house once because she had made yep. arrangements with someone to take care of them. So it's the same for chickens. You. You, once you have them, you have them. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, what do you think is the greatest challenge to a novice in doing this? Sure. Um, well, I think education is probably the biggest challenge. Um, like I said, you know, 50 to 100 years ago, everyone grew up with backyard chickens. So if you had a question, you could go ask your parents or your grandparents yeah. or your neighbors. Um, now you're kind of learning from scratch, so mm -hmm. getting good access to that educational information and learning how to take care of them, um, mm -hmm. there's a big learning curve, so that's part of what Extension is there to help with, yeah. um, to kind of help catch people up and be a good, a good resource of information. You can Google things and find things online, um, but the quality of the information is sometimes um, a little arguable. So getting information oh, yeah. from Extension or from good library publications is a much oh, better yeah. way to go. I, I can't stress that enough. I mean, uh, because the bad thing about the internet is convenient, but you don't know where some of this stuff is coming from anyone or how can post current anything. it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyone, I mean, uh, so, but uh, anyway, uh, what advice would you give on someone on who wants to build an actual full-blown coop? Chicken coop? Yeah, chicken. and we do actually have quite a few books on chicken farming in the library. We have some of them right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
the, you know, if you want to do it, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, coupes can be, I mean, they can be anything from, from very simple to probably fancier than most of the houses that we live in. <laughs> um, you know, I always say coupes have to provide protection from the elements, protection from predators, and be well ventilated. Mm -hmm. um, short of, after that, it's kind of your imagination is the limit. Um, so there are, you know, this is, looks like a really good resource for one, mm -hmm. uh, reinventing the chicken coop. So there are a lot of publications out there that um, will give some blueprints and some design ideas and, mm -hmm. and really the aesthetic is up to you. I mean, they can make uh, coops that kind of fit right in with the rest of your design of your house. Mm -hmm. um, or you can do something very functional. I've seen coops made from um, converted uh, storage buildings and mm -hmm. converted playhouses for children. and. Um, yeah, it can be elaborate good. or easy. But, uh, well, you know, it's funny. I was just looking at your website, and uh, it seems like there's an, uh, a, a lot of information on chicken farming. I mean, uh, can you give us an idea of exactly how much information is there? <laughs> yeah, IFAS has some really good information. Um, ranging all the way from getting started and raising chicks mm -hmm. all the way up to some common diseases that you might see in poultry. Um, mm -hmm. One publication I have that we have that I like a lot is one that's kind of troubleshooting. Yeah. So we get those calls a lot if your chickens stop laying eggs or if there's some sort of problem, kind of helping you troubleshoot through why that might be and how to fix the problem. Okay. But, uh, well, you know, it, uh, since we're talking about online, people are going to ask, I mean, all oh, right, I'm on the website and I see something I want. How can I get it? Yep. <laughs> you can print it. You can email it. You can save it. Share it on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. We're very open with our information. It's not a closely guarded secret. So um, we love, you know, I love nothing more than when I get on social media and see someone linking back to something from Extension because our goal as extension agents is to disseminate the information to as many people as oh, possible. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, and that's the whole point of doing all this. I right. mean, uh, somebody once said that the, United, the business of the United States government, and I'd say even in county and local governments, is information. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I mean, it's paid for by the people, so mm -hmm. the people should get it. We want them get to have access to it, absolutely. But, uh, so, you know, Okay, enough with coops, but mm -hmm. uh, you know it is a good question because I'm sure people don't think about it much. But you know, why are eggs important to your family cell? Sure. Well, I mean, I've heard eggs called the perfect food, and that's mm -hmm. probably pretty close to true. Um, they've got a really good compilation of vitamins and minerals. It's very high protein, mm -hmm. um, super healthy food. Mm -hmm. um, eggs are relatively inexpensive, whether you're buying them from the grocery store or preparing them yourself from your backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and they can be used in a lot of different recipes. So um, a lot of times in my family, we use eggs to kind of stretch our grocery budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can incorporate eggs into some of our other meals um, and kind of add to the protein and to the health for our Oh, yeah. for our diet yeah. so but uh, I actually uh, knew someone that uh, they used actually more than the usual egg to make a turkey meatloaf mm -hmm. because uh, it actually gave it higher protein sure. and it gave it a little more body mm -hmm. and you know extra breadcrumbs and everything and uh, she said it worked very well for her Absolutely, yeah. but uh, you know this is also a good question you know how would home produced eggs differ from supermarket variety? Okay. Um, from a food safety and nutrition standpoint, there's not going to be a big difference. Um, where you'll see the difference is a lot of times when you crack open the egg, yeah. um, because of what the chicken is eating when they're at home, which is a lot more a more varied diet, more greens, they're going to have a higher vitamin A content. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the yolk will be darker, so you'll see a darker yellow yolk at home raised eggs. Mm -hmm. The other thing we see a lot is because when you buy eggs at the grocery store, um, someone has gone through those eggs and only selected the eggs that look like a standard egg to be put in that carton. Yeah. The hens will lay eggs that are misshapen. We see big eggs, little eggs, mm -hmm. long eggs, skinny eggs. So you'll see a greater variety of egg appearances coming mm -hmm. out of your backyard hens. And we get calls about that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they're perfectly safe to eat. <laughs> um, so there's, there's nothing wrong with finding a funny egg every once in a while. Well, yeah, uh, actually I would think that, you know, no matter what shape it is, the true test is when you open it, I mean, does mm -hmm. it have a strange sort of bad smell, then you shouldn't touch it. Right, and, and that's, that's going to be pretty infrequent. Yeah, don't bag, uh, bad eggs float? I have heard that, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there's, there's a couple of ways to sort of keep mm -hmm. yourself safe. Yeah. But, uh, 
but okay, now we're back to chickens. Okay, how many do you think you should have for a backyard operation? You know, you could sort of answer to start off with and, and or to right. you know, go so a, little, a little more. A hen cannot lay more than one egg every 24 hours okay. physiologically. Um, and every couple of days, just based on her natural cycle, she'll skip a day of laying. Mm -hmm. So we normally recommend two to three hens per family member. Mm -hmm. um, we'll keep you in at least an egg or two a day per person. Um, so the number that you should have really depends on how many eggs your family likes to eat. Right. Um, you know, it's always a good idea to start a little small, make sure you can handle two or three hens and before you grow your flock. Mm -hmm. And then where you live really governs a lot of that too. Um, some cities may ha allow five or six hens, some may say only two or three. So you need to check with your local um, governing bodies and make sure that you're not going to be violating any of their codes or, um, oh, before, yeah. you, before and you start actually, purchasing. Just want to let everyone know you can go onto the city website and they have the municipal code for Leesburg. Uh, for anyone who's not in the city of Leesburg and curious about their town, there's a website called Muni Code and it has them for the entire country. Just mm -hmm. about everybody's on Muni Code now and uh, it's pretty easy to find and if, if you're not sure just call up your mm -hmm. city hall, but and they'll they'll let, they'll you, let you know. Out. But uh, so anyway, which breeds do you think work best for the backyard? Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. We categorize chicken breeds; they're either layer breeds, which mean they're known for heavy egg production. Yeah. We have broiler breeds that are known for meat production, and then we have dual purpose breeds that don't do a great job at either one, but do an adequate job at both. Yeah. Um, so it kind of depends on what you want to do. If you want to raise exclusively eggs, we'd recommend going for a layer breed. Mm -hmm. If you're hoping to do meat, go for a broiler breed. If you're maybe hoping to have eggs and occasionally throw a chicken in the pot, then a, a dual purpose might work best for you. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many different breeds though, and each breed is a very different appearance, mm -hmm. um, different personalities, if you will, um, not unlike dog breeds would be. Right. So it's kind of you're the one who has to look at them every day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I recommend research it and kind of seeing what appeals to you and and, um, and going with that. Oh yeah and uh, well you know it's funny that's another thing because uh, now that we're talking something like broiler fryer uh, that's definitely a reason to check your local municipal yes. code because I mean just because you can raise chickens and, and for eggs doesn't mean It'll you can you do, do yeah. the rest of it Absolutely. so just be careful about that mm -hmm. but uh, Anyway, I was going to ask you, Megan, what attributes should the chicken farmer to be, the once and future chicken farmer, uh, be looking for when actually buying chickens? Okay, <laughs> um, so you want to get them from a reputable source and make mm -hmm. sure they're healthy. Um, I normally recommend buying chicks or pullets yeah. because hens have a fairly short productive life. So you don't want to purchase a grown hen and find out that you're getting her at the end of her productive life and then right. you have a chicken that's not going to lay eggs for you or one that's got a disease or worms or any other problems. Um, so you can buy um, a young hen, a pullet, that's at the beginning of her productive life and have a couple of years of good eggs from her. Um, or you can go buy the chicks or even fertile eggs and hatch them out yourself. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, this is a good question. I mean, how long does a hen have mm -hmm. in a laying period? How mm -hmm. So they reach their peak productivity at about a year of age. Yeah. And they'll continue to lay after that, but the productivity will decline somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at probably two to three years max of really somewhat reliable egg laying. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard some hens who will go into 10 years of age and lay every once in a while, yeah. but it's not going to be as reliable as they were when they were younger. Okay, that's something good to remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, this is sort of a double question. Um, do you think that uh, having children involved in, in raising chickens is a good idea? And w also, what could they learn from doing something like sure. that? Um, I think they're great. I mean, kids and chickens go together really well. <laughs> um, and actually, a lot of chickens that are raised around children become a lot like pets. They become very yeah. tame because the kids are always around with them. Um, with my son, we've actually set up an incubator at home and hatched out some chicks from eggs <laughs> um, and done that as a science project. So we've talked about embryology and the development of the chick and, yeah. um, and it taught him a lot of responsibility as well because he had to turn the eggs twice a day. 
um, no matter what. Yeah, I, I've so, been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, unfortunately, we live in an area that wouldn't doesn't allow us to keep the chickens, so yeah. we got the eggs from the farmer, raised the chicks, and then returned them to the farmer once they hatched, mm -hmm. but we still got to enjoy the process of um, mm -hmm. seeing that new life come into the world. So, okay. Yep. And, uh, okay, well, you know, since we're talking about it, What's the best way to retrieve an egg from under a hen? <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a lot of times hens will not be broody, which means that the um, instinct to sit on their eggs has been kind of bred out of them. Right. So they'll lay an egg and you can go in there and take the egg and they don't even take notice of you. Every once in a while you'll get a hen that's a little bit broody and then it's just speed <laughs> is of the essence. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh yeah, I, I, I learned that. I mean, you know, for a kid from Brooklyn, I think I've done everything on a farm that can be done. <laughs> But, uh, okay, well, you know, it, unfortunately we were going to have a co-guest, we were going to, Megan was going to bring a chicken, yeah. but that wasn't possible, but, you know, uh, you know, if, if you had the chicken here, what breed would it have been? Um, a general laying breed, so there's a lot of kind of mixed breeds. Um, one of the ones that's really popular is a Rhode Island Red. Uh -huh. um, they're attractive little red hen, pretty docile, and reliable brown egg layers. All right, sounds good. And that is something I ask, because some people say, you know, there's this controversy that so-called brown eggs are supposed to be better than white eggs. I mean, does IFAS have any thoughts on that? There is absolutely no difference once you crack that egg open nutritionally. A brown mm -hmm. egg is exactly the same as a white egg, but you're going to pay more for a brown egg at the grocery store. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. only difference. <laughs> <laughs> Says. Well, you know, here's another question. Let's say you've got this chicken coop and, you, and you're actually having a surplus of eggs mm -hmm. and I know you can only keep them so long in the refrigerator. So uh, do you think, uh, is, is it legal to sell eggs? You There are some um, new legislation that just come out concerning the selling of backyard chicken eggs. Yeah. Um, but it's something that if that's something you want to do, I definitely suggest calling the extension office and speaking to myself or one of my colleagues directly um, so we can kind of walk you through the steps and make sure that you are oh, yeah. um, and once your again, T's check, across check your eyes are dotted. Yes. <laughs> Please. Yep. But uh, well, you know what, uh, this is a sort of interesting question. Let's say you're raising some chickens on your block and your neighbor who's like around the corner but your yards join, they decide to do it because they're watching you do it all mm -hmm. the time. And so anyway, uh, let's say you're both raising enough eggs that you decide that uh, you would like to sell them, is it possible to form a sort of like a small family co-op? Sure, yeah, and that's, you know, that's a great way for small farmers to be productive because they can split the cost of feed and marketing mm -hmm. and, um, but again, there are, there are codes in place that would govern that yeah. um, and there are laws in place for food safety reasons that mm -hmm. would govern the way the eggs need to be processed and stored. Oh yeah, and also one thing I should bring up, and that's because I used to work in a corporate law firm, is that if you're getting to the, this point where you have like four or five people all producing eggs, you really should think about incorporating sure. uh, because, uh, I mean, you don't want things like feed and, and medicines and everything to be a personal expense. It's bought by the corporation, sure. which everybody you know, shares and everybody profits some. So it's best to really just sort of spell it all out, believe yeah. me. Uh, but uh, well, anyway, uh, we're just about ready to uh, close here, but uh, what imp what's the most important advice you can give to someone who decides they would like to raise chickens at home? Yep, get to know your extension agent. Um, mm -hmm. Come by, give me a call. Um, ask the questions first, don't make assumptions. Make sure you do lots of reading, whether it's at the library or on our website. Um, and give yourself as much of an educational background in poultry production as you can. Mm -hmm. So that way when you get started off, you're much more likely to succeed. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, wouldn't uh, the FDA also have things, FDA.gov? Sure. Uh, food, uh, yep. food and Drug They have a lot of good information on food safety and safe handling of eggs mm -hmm. in terms of how eggs should be stored and washed and handled um, when going from the farm to the table. Okay, so there we have it. We have everything except the chicken, which I'm quite disappointed about. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> but, you know, there was a good reason why Megan yeah. couldn't bring it. So, uh, I mean, she wasn't ready for her close-up, and we're just <laughs> going with that.
Okay, uh, Megan, you know, uh, the reason why we're doing this is that on August 27th next mm -hmm. month there's going to be a program here at the library called Chicken University. Yeah. So can you tell us a little more about that for, so that people will know? Sure, it's going to be kind of a crash course and mm -hmm. everything to do with backyard chicken. So we're going to touch a little bit on uh, poultry biology and reproduction, mm -hmm. um, egg production, how to set up a coop, what breed mm -hmm. to get, um, how to protect them from predators, and then what to, what to do with the eggs once you have them. Um, mm -hmm. So it should be a, a good program and we certainly invite anyone from Leesburg who'd be interested to come and, uh, come and join us. Okay. Um Remember Leesburg, you heard it here first. Uh, this program is free, it's open to the public, and uh, you can find out more about it on our website at uh, www.leesburgflorida.gov slash library. And uh, everything, all of our programs are listed on the webpage in something called Event Keeper. So when you click on Event Keeper, it shows you everything for that day and everything for months in advance. I just I just booked something for January of next year. So, I mean, uh, our, our schedule is very complete. And if you have any questions, just call up the library and 352-728-9790 and press three for reference and we'll take care of it. So thank you for joining us.